Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm going to be going over an effect that was actually recommended to me in the comments, and basically it's this effect right here, so let me go a little bit before it. So you have a scene, and then this white, you know, wall comes here, and then it slides over, and it changes the color as it slides over. So that's the effect we're going to be going over here, and you can see I've kind of created it right here. Um, and so that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to be going over a really simple way, which is sort of a little bit more linear than this one, because I want to, you know, it kind of went fast and then kind of went slow. Um, let me look that up again. If you notice the background, it doesn't just linearly move over, it actually moves sort of fast, then it slows down at the end, so it's sort of like curved in the transition. I'm gonna be going over how to do that as well. Like I said, it's just a little bit more complicated. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and delete this, or not delete this. I'm gonna go into here, and you can see that there is nothing currently happening. And if we drag what I just put on there, over it, you can see that it transitions, and then we have a background in there like the other one. So it's really neat that I you can create it in its own sequence, and then you can just drag it and drop it whenever you need it. So, but we're going to start from scratch. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to delete that out of here, and I'm going to drag out. Or actually, instead of dragging, I'm going to click to make sure that I don't have to, you know, try to make it fit. And I'm just going to type something like "fun transition," and then I'm going to go ahead and highlight it, click on it, click Control A, go to Fill and make sure that the fill goes to black. So now that I have this started, we can get the effect. So we want to move it where we want. We want to right click on this and we want to click nest. And then we're going to name it fun transition like so. And then now if we double click on it, we'll be we'll jump right into that. So we have this one here, which is its own, uh, I always call them compositions because of After Effects, its own sequence right here. And then now we have the new sequence created, which is if we double click on it, right there let me go ahead and delete the other one out of there so now we have both of them we can jump back and forth now anything we do in this one will be represented over here in this one and it gives us our own workspace and now you'll notice that that you can't see anything that's because the text is black here so that it blends into the background so what we need to do is we need to add a white background to that you go up to file new and then go here to color mat click ok and then choose the color click ok and it'll be inputted i already have a white background here created so i'm just going to go ahead and drag that in under this now that we have the white background going, you can see that if we go over here, it's exactly the same now. So what we need to do is we need to move to maybe just a little bit in there. Then we're gonna click on the white background. We're gonna hit the position here. We're gonna move forward maybe 15 frames. Then we're going to go ahead and drag the left one over here. So that's the X and Y and drag it right off the screen. And then now if we go back here, you'll notice all it's doing is it just drags it straight off like so. So now we need to have the text actually change color. So we're gonna go over here, and what we need to do is we need to do something like a little bit, uh, a little bit complex, I guess you could say. But it's just sort of a fun workaround that we're gonna be making to do this. Uh, you probably have to do basically the same thing in After Effects. So what we need is we need some video tracks over here. So I'm gonna right click on there, go down to Add Tracks. Uh, we don't need any more audio tracks. I'm gonna go up to like seven. I need just need some room to work here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to right click on this, or my bad, I'm going to click on this, I'm going to hit Control C, then Control V to copy it. But we need to make sure that this isn't selected, this one is, so it copies up there. And then, so now we have two of the exact same text right here. If you see if I move it over, they're two of the exact same. And so then I'm going to go to the bottom one, and I'm going to actually, let's go to the top one to make sure we don't accidentally select the bottom one. We're going to hit Control A drag that down to white but we need the white on the bottom so i'm going to drag this one up here and then drag them down like so that's why i need i just need some room to work with in here uh they don't really have a very good swap it'll just overtake it so i just have some room so i can do the swaps myself and now if you'll see if we remove this one it removes well, let me move the background over here it's the white's under it and the black is on the top like so so then the next step is we're going to go to the point where it starts to intersect, which is right here. We're gonna click on the top one right here, uh, the black one. Then we're gonna go down to text and then it'll have the in parentheses what the text is. We're gonna click on this button and it'll create ourselves a frame that we can see. We're going to click on this and we're gonna hold shift so it goes directly over to the right. Gonna click on this one as well, hold shift so it goes directly over to the white. And we actually wanna line this up perfectly so I'm gonna adjust this one back a little bit. And so now it's right on the edge right here. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go and we want to turn on mask path. Then we want to move forward until the point that it is past the text right here. We're then going to click back on mask one right here so that we can see it. Then we're gonna hold shift to drag it over and we wanna drag it exactly back onto that edge. If we go before or afterwards, it'll lag during here and the wall of, 
uh, white here will not be transitioning at the exact same time the text is. So now that we have this going, the mask is going to move and it's going to remove the black top and remove or and show the bottom one. So you can see just like that, we have this effect going. We go back over here and you can see that it is working just like so. So now that is the simple version, a uh, really fast and sort of fun way to do it. And you know, a lot of times that will be just really all that you need. But now I'm going to go over a slightly more complex version. The complex version is, you know, a little bit more, a uh, little bit more work because you're going to have to be doing some more adjustments and probably uh, adjusting the mask frame by frame instead of all at once. But it shouldn't be too difficult in the end. So let's jump in here and let's sort of go into the more complex version. So what we need to do is I'm going to go up here. I'm going to delete these keyframes out of here. And so now it's just doing the exact same thing it was before. And now I'm going to go down here into the white background and we're going to delete the position keys out of here as well. Now, if you want to add just a little bit of style, you can click on this. You can go into temporal interpolation, easy in, uh, then easy out, you know, some combination of those two. And you can see the velocity graph right here. So you can see now it has sort of a, a lot more of a fun sort of transition right here. And then do the effect from there perfectly fine except what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of motion blur so I'm not going to do it right here I'm actually going to drag in the transform effect and do it in there but you don't have to if you're not you know looking for motion blur and then just follow along later on how you actually animate that so what I'm going to do instead is just delete both of these I'm going to drop that down and then we're going to go into effects down here and I'm going to find transform by just searching trans uh, probably if I just search the whole thing, it'll come up quicker. Distort right here, under distort, transform, click on this, and we're gonna drag that onto here. And now all we're gonna do is we're gonna do the exact same thing, so we're gonna be dragging it from the position keyframe in the transform, so we're gonna move forward uh, 15, so that's five, that's 15 right there. And then we're gonna move it back like so. And now, the only reason we brought this in here is because when you see, if we move it here, if I go down here and I uncheck, uncheck use composition shutter and increase the angle, you'll see that I get a little bit of motion blur uh, whenever it's moving. And that's gonna add just a little bit more of a smooth sort of feel to it. And you can notice that when we go back into here, it's going to actually have those lines where it's their lines of transparency, which gives it just a little bit more of a, a neat flow to it. And maybe not as extreme as that either. We can lower that back down and just make it a little bit motion blurred. But I just feel it makes it look better. And then now what we need to do is once these two are like that, we can do the exact same thing. Right click on this one, temporal interpolation, easy out. Right click on this one, temporal interpolation, easy in. Drop down the position, and we actually want to sort of move this around so it's kind of like that. Sort of move it and have some fun with it. And that's the velocity, so how fast it'll be going. So it comes in really fast and it sort of slows down in the end. Sort of what that other one looked like, so I like that right there. So then now we need to redo the animation on the top one. So what we need to do is we need to actually go in here. The mask path is still there. So I'm just going to actually click on this mask. I'm going to go ahead and eh, whatever. We'll click. OK. OK, we got it back. If you notice, I deleted that other one and I just started over again. These masks are a little bit finicky in this program. But I got it back to where I wanted. So we did exactly what we did before, created a mask, dragged it over. If you want to delete the mask, I found out. Right click on it, click clear. You can start from there. Anyway, let's get back to it. So we're right here. And now what we need to do is we need to move this forward, except we can't go all at the same time because it's not linear anymore. So if we move it all the way over to the right and try it, it'll lag. So what we need to do is we need to do this frame by frame. So let's turn on mask path. Let's go one frame forward. Then we're going to need to go up to the mask here. And then we're going to drag it over to that exact same point. One frame forward, drag it over. One frame forward, drag it over. And we're going to be doing this all the way across. Luckily, it moves so fast that there's probably like seven of these. Um, so it's not the worst thing in the world to do. And I wouldn't really see a situation where you'd have more than, you know, unless you're making it go really, really slow. And so just like that, it's done. And now we have that redone. Now it's doing the fast speed. And we have that fun sort of speed and blur to it, as well as the transition sticks exactly where it should be, like so. And now if we go back here to the main composition, we see that it works perfectly fine, just like that. And then you can drag and drop this anywhere that you want. So you could drag it at the end. Maybe this is where the transition starts. So then it kind of pops in. You could put another one here. And it's actually kind of fun with this bus one moving here. It moves with the bus, which is kind of neat. Um, it moves with the background there, which is, yeah, like I said, kind of neat. Anyway, that is the tutorial. Um, 
the easy and the hard way to do it. Sometimes those masks can get a little finicky, but that is it in a nutshell. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and those in the comment section below. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I make a video every other day and I'm sort of having a lot of fun with Premiere and sort of the graphics that you can actually add in here without having to touch After Effects. So yeah, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And until next time, guys, see ya.